So in this example, we want to look at computing the mean and variance of a random variable given its probability density function. So the density function we're going to work with for the random variable x, it's a little bit of a contrived example, but it'll give us some practice actually using the definition of mean and variance and computing this weighted average across the probability density function. So the random variable that we're going to work with is x, and we're going to say that its probability density function looks like this triangle right here. So if you look at this and you compute its area, and draw an equation for it, first of all the area is 1, so 1 half base times height is the area of a triangle, so if you integrated this it integrates to 1 just like it needs to for a PDF, and if you write the equation for this probability density function, you have that it is 1 eighth times the quantity x plus 2. And you can check that pretty easily. When x is negative 2, a negative 2 plus 2 is 0, so the PDF is 0. And then when x is equal to 2, you have 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 over 8 is a half, so it peaks at a half when x equals 2. And then in between there, it's just this linear line, so it grows with x. So that is the equation for our probability density function. And we want to do a few things. First thing we want to do is we want to compute the mean of the random variable x. So the notation we use for that is mu sub x. And we know that mu sub x can also be written as the expected value of the random variable x. When we compute the expected value of a quantity, we take that quantity, in this case x, we multiply it by its probability density function, and then we integrate over minus infinity to infinity. This is just the definition of the expected value of the quantity x. So in this case, instead of integrating from minus infinity to infinity, we integrate from minus 2 to 2 because the probability density function is 0 elsewhere. We're going to integrate x times the equation that we have for the probability density function, because that's what we need to plug in here. So I now have an integral that I need to evaluate with respect to x. I'll simplify that a little bit. I'll pull the 1 eighth out front because it's just a constant. Then I'll go ahead and multiply, distribute the x to get x squared plus 2x. So now I just need to integrate this polynomial. So this is pretty easy. I'll leave the 1 eighth alone. x squared turns into x cubed over 3, plus 2x integrates to 2x squared over 2. And I need to evaluate this at the limits of the integral 2 and minus 2. So again, leaving the 1 eighth out front, I need to evaluate this expression at 2. So when I evaluate 2 cubed, I get 8 over 3 plus x squared when x is 2 is 4, and then I subtract off this quantity evaluated at negative 2. So negative 2 cubed is negative 8, so I get negative 8 thirds, and negative 2 squared is 4, so I get 4 again. And if I simplify this, it simplifies to this. You can see the force cancel. I end up with 16 thirds, which multiplied by 1 eighth gives me 1 eighth times 16 thirds, which is equal to 2 thirds. So part of the reason we picked this specific probability density function is it's easy to work with and it's easy to evaluate the mean from this definition because it really reduces to having to do integrals of polynomials and integrating polynomials is a very simple thing to do. But nonetheless, we've computed the mean of this random variable x. And if we go back to the probability density function and look at the probability density function, this is probably a reasonable guess. The probability density function, it's somewhat symmetric about zero, but it's kind of shifted. Its density is kind of heavier on the right side. So the fact that we ended up with a mean at two-thirds, which is just a little bit bigger than zero, seems like that's a reasonable answer for the average value of this random variable. All right, let's do something else. Let's compute the mean squared value of the random variable x. So let's compute the expected value of the random variable squared. Again, by definition, this means we need to integrate from minus infinity to infinity of whatever quantity is inside the expectation operator. Inside the expectation operator is the quantity x squared, so we put an x squared there. And now we need to multiply by the probability density function, p of x of x. So again, we plug in, the 1 8 comes out front, x squared stays there, we replace px of x with its equation, which was 1 8 times the quantity x plus 2. Simplifying, this turns into x cubed plus 2x squared. So again, we have a polynomial that we need to integrate. It's just a slightly different polynomial. So x cubed integrates to x4 over 4. 2x squared integrates to 2x cubed over 3. And we need to evaluate this at the limits of the integral 2 and minus 2. So let's go ahead and do that simplification. 
This is 1 eighth times the quantity. The first part we need to evaluate at 2. So 2 to the 4th is 16, so we end up with 16 fourths. Plus 2 times 2 cubed, so that's 2 times 8 is 16 over 3. And then we need to subtract this quantity evaluated at negative 2. A negative 2 to the 4th is 16. And a negative 2 cubed is a negative 8. So 2 times a negative 8 is negative 16. And now we just have to do a little algebra simplification. So you can see the 16 fourths cancel, 16 fourths minus 16 fourths, and then we have two 16 third terms that add together. So 1 eighth times 32 thirds, and again if we simplify we get 4 thirds. So we've now computed the mean squared va value of this random variable. Finally, let's compute the variance of the random variable x. The variance, we use the notation sigma squared, that's what we use for the variance of a random variable. And by definition, this is the expected value of x squared minus the mean of x squared. So if you'll notice, we've already computed in part b the expected value of x squared. And in part a, we already computed the mean of x, which is also synonymous with the expected value of x. We've already computed these things. So we can simply plug in. From part b, we computed the mean squared as 4 thirds. And from part a, we computed the mean as 2 thirds. So this turns into 4 thirds minus 2 thirds squared, which is 4 thirds minus 4 ninths, which is 12 ninths minus 4 ninths, just getting a common denominator, which is 8 ninths. So we have computed the variance of this random variable. And one sanity check to do here is that variance always has to be greater than or equal to 0. So if you had made a slight mistake on part A, or a slight mistake on part B, or some slight mistake here in the computation of variance, if you had ended up with a number, say, minus one-fourth or negative seven, that would be a big clue that you've done something horribly wrong because variance, at its very least, is zero. So it's always greater than or equal to zero. So the fact that we got eight-ninths here seems like it's a reasonable number. There's some chance we could have made a mistake. But we did get a positive number, so there's no big clue that we need to relook at anything.